resilience in rebuilding their lives. Here to speak to us about this and more is the spokesperson, Uganda Red Cross Society, Irene Nakasita. Good afternoon to you, Irene. Good afternoon, and thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Please help us understand what does this day mean to refugees in Uganda? Well, not, not, not only to the refugees in Uganda, but to the refugees worldwide. And of course, uh, for us in Uganda, we use it to highlight the plight of the refugees and also call for more support and attention. I know there are refugee situations that might be taking center stage, for example, the Ukraine situation. But now when it comes to the Ugandan part, we also use it as such a day to uh, attract or call upon the attention of everybody, all the stakeholders, to come to reality and look at the situation in Uganda where we are hosting over 1.6 million refugees and since March 28th to date for example we've received over 32,000 refugees from DR Congo alone that is a very very big number for starters to look at and people arriving in a single day at so many and then when you look at the resources already as a country we are overstretched with the big number that we have and then more people coming into the country we use such a day to bring to the international world and also help them appreciate what it is for refugees to keep moving or for people to be on the move. What is it that we cannot do to stop people being on the move? So for us it's an opportunity to highlight the plight of refugees but also call on everybody, all the key players to come to reality and appreciate and also see how such population movement can stop. Okay, all right. Irene has brought to light the plight, one of the issues being resource allocation. Away from that, what work is Red Cross doing in response to the refugee crisis that we are seeing at the border between DRC and Uganda? Actually, the first refugee was received by the Red Cross. And if you go to the border of Bunagana, that is Uganda and DRC, the first people you interface with are the, are the Red Cross teams that are on ground. First of all, we do the reception. We receive them, then support them to move. Government and UNHCR have put their transport services, but the Red Cross manages that movement. So we move them to the reception and holding center. Now, when they get there, we have what we call information as aid. As any new person, when you arrive to a new place, you need to understand, you need to get your bearing. Where do I start from? What do I do? Where do I go if I want food? If I'm missing my person, where do I go? I need water. What do I do? So such services are called lifelines. So we provide such lifeline information to them or information as aid. Then now we go into the big nitty gritties of water, hygiene, and sanitation because they are key. I will tell you that around, uh, I think last month, April, we registered cases of cholera. Why? Because when water hygiene and sanitation issues are not critical and quickly addressed, we can have an outbreak and it's a life-threatening um, situation. So we've set up what we call T95 big water tanks that help the refugees to access clean and safe water. Then we've also put up latrine facilities and we do this on a daily, not just putting them and go away. So these, of course, should be able to help them find a place where they can ease themselves. Then we provide core non-food relief items. These are blankets, these are tarpaulins, these are kitchens. These are basic things that people need to start up with, at least when they have just arrived. Mm -hmm. Now there's provision of food, not done by the Red Cross, but another agency responsible for food provides the food. And then on a day to day, we support them. There's psychosocial support. Mm -hmm. People walk long distances. They arrive when they're emotionally drained. They are tired, they are sick. They need this person to speak to them, what we call psychosocial. And emotional support okay. and on a daily many other humanitarian life-saving services including first aid because some arrive when they are wounded they are mothers who give birth mm -hmm. there we need to position teams and our teams are on ground working with other partners All to right. and them. finally what are some of the gaps that we need to actually fill to be able to have our refugee response more successful actually right now as I speak I must say that I think we had planned or envisaged to host because any emergency normally lasts for three months we had planned for three months on all sectors, be it water hygiene and sanitation, be it food, be it core relief non-food items and the day-to-day -day running of the settlement. But as I speak, we are beyond that. So that means all the sectors have gaps. We need more funding to sustain this because we are not so sure 
when it will end. I want to mention that until fighting stops in DR Congo, okay. we cannot be sure the refugee situation in DR Congo will improve. All right. Thank you yeah. so much, Ari Nakasita, who is with the Red Cross and aiding the situation at the Bunagana border. She has made a light to the fact that what and sanitization resource and also psychosocial services that they do offer to the refugees goes a long way in helping them resettle in the different camps and settlements. Away from that, we take a short break here on NTV at 1. We do return shortly. Do stay with us.